So welcome ladies and gentlemen to episode 2 in our learning series and today I want to show you how to generate smaller shards on an object and how to use Triggerer. So these are very basic and very important features and functions uh, you need to have a better control about how you see or your simulation is looking like and how it is work and um, yeah this is something very important for you and uh, the great thing is it's absolutely easy to use it so i have my basic scene here that means i have a ground and uh, this time again i'm going to use only the default cube and um, so i would say we can start with uh, something like a wall so uh, let's resize our default cube to make a little bit look like a wall. Resize it here and uh, so that, that should be okay. So uh, our ground is a cube too and it has already a rigid body um, physics uh, on it. It's passive and um, you can see the settings I did here. Uh, I could increase the friction. Uh, all right, so um, so one thing is um, let's make that wall a rigid body um, because the problem is um, we need the wall to be exactly on top of the ground and um, you could try to bring it uh, exactly on the top by moving it and if you play the animation you will see it is still falling down and uh, if it's not on top it starts to jump and so um, a trick I do is uh, I bring it a little bit more on top play the animation and when it's still there I press ctrl and a and say um, and sail and say visual transform that will make the actual position as a, a ground position for that object so click on this and now when you jump to frame one you will see it's on top don't worry it is moving yet but uh, when we have our fracture modifier on it and start to work with it it uh, will stay uh, in position and does not do anything all right so um, let's fracture it go to the fracture modifier and click on execute fracture and play the animation and you will see we have some charts here um, you could toggle wireframe to see how it is actually looking like. And what we are uh, going to do now is we want to have a UV sphere that will fall down to the wall. So when you play the animation, nothing happens because it's required to make the sphere a rigid body. An active one is correct, so it falls down. Yes, yeah, and breaks something out. So, the thing is this, that is not looking realistic and we cannot use it in any production. So, uh, what would be required is uh, to have uh, smaller pieces on the place where our sphere is colliding with the wall. And uh, one way to have more pieces or more shards is to increase the shard count here. So, let's say 500 in example and then execute fracture. But that would mean you have everywhere have everywhere smaller shards and um, this will decrease uh, the speed of your workflow because there are many calculations and that is not really required so what we would like to have is something like let's begin with one shard execute fracture one shard of course means that is just one object without any break and now we can pull the sphere down to the wall and while it is selected, hold shift on your keyboard and select your wall and then click on generate smaller shards. Before I do this, I want to show you something. Let's go to the sphere and give it a name. Name the object to something like uh, breaker. Okay, so while this is selected, select your wall and click on generate smaller shards. All right, now you see something happened here. Let's bring our breaker back on top and you will see the fracture modifier makes an invisible duplicate of our sphere and gave it the same name as the original object has so this is the breaker helper if your sphere would have another name something like ball 
or world or planet or something like this, that would be uh, here. Then you would have ball or word underline helper. So our add-on does automatically gives a good name to it. And it uh, makes it uh, just as bounding box visible in the viewport. But you can change this in this tab here and um, you will see bounce here, maximum draw type. Bring it back to solid, you so, you so, so you will see this is the original object, but uh, we do not need to see it and it is not required to render it. So that's why the add-on makes it just bounce and it uh, makes it also invisible for render and it is automatically parented to your fracture object. So you will always have it on the correct position. So let's open this and you will see the breaker object and it is automatically hidden for the renderer. So when you have the render preview an example, you won't see it. And uh, in rendering, you won't see it too. And uh, what's also cool is all helper objects will be placed on the last layer. So when clicking on this, you will only see helper objects. And when you click only on layer one, they are hidden and you will see only the important things of your scene. Another thing with this helper is um, the add-on made a particle system for this. You can see it in the particle tips tab here, particle system with some settings here, and you will find the same settings on the left here. Uh, don't worry about the particle randomness here. I will talk about that in a later tutorial, but actually it is not required. Uh, you can make the particles visible using our add-on. So let's say point and you will see the particle cloud. And now you understand what is happening here. The fracture modifier uses this particle cloud to generate smaller shards. And um, this is the way the fracture modifier works. It only uses particles uh, when, when working with helpers and then generates smaller shards on the place where the particles are. And um, that will that will mean you can uh, move this cloud where you want it and you can rescale it or you can um, you can increase the number of particles in example. And um, what makes a lot of fun is to manipulate this in real time. So while your fracture modifier object is selected, you could enable automatic execution. And that means whenever you're changing anything, um, the helper add-on will trigger fracturing. It is the same as clicking on execute fracture all the time when you change something. So while this is enabled, you can move the point cloud and you will see what the fracture modifier is doing in real time. And that means also you could rescale it like this and bring it more on the top or on the front. And then you will see you have on the front the smaller pieces and on the back side you have bigger pieces. That's really cool. This is the way we can work and have a full control about how uh, that all will look like. So let's jump back to the first frame. And um, I would say these shards are too big. So I want to have some more shards here. Uh, let's try something like 50. So that looks pretty good. I would say uh, disable toggle automatic execution and play the animation. Yes. So in general, this is going to be a good simulation, but we have a problem. Everything is falling directly. And what we can do now is we can say the wall, it is animated. What means it will do nothing. It's just a static model yet. And then we can tell it is triggered. Now, when you play the animation, nothing is happening because a triggered object is always waiting for an object that has a trigger on it. That means our sphere should be the trigger. So while this is selected, make it a trigger. Click on this checkbox and now play the animation and you will see the trigger will move the shards where it hits it. That is really cool because you can move this trigger on the left side. In example, you will see only the shard there will break apart. Bring it back here. Now we can uh, also play around with um, the math and example. Give it a high, higher value here, let's say 100. Then it is uh, more stable and looks more beautiful. Really cool. Uh, what about other things? We have a ghost here, 
A ghost is used uh, an example of if you want to have, uh, let's say, a street where uh, that will break, but you do not want to have a breaker object to move the shards, to collide it with it. It should just enable the shards to fall. Uh, that means a ghost object will not collide with anything, but it will enable the shards to fall. So, play the animation. It will fall through the wall, but it will not directly move the shards. This is uh, how a ghost object will work. So far, great. But did you know? You cannot, cannot uh, only use uh, your original object to generate uh, a helper object for smaller shards. Let me delete it and uh, fracture again to see how it is original looking like. You could also use a path in example. So let's add a path here. And uh, let me move it a little bit more on the front here. And in edit mode. Manipulate it a little bit so it's looking like this. So, all right. Uh, make sure it uh, is going to touch your wall. And uh, now we have the same workflow. While it is selected, hold shift and select your wall. Click on generate smaller shards and you will see you have smaller shards along your path. And uh, what the fractal helper add-on is doing here is it takes the path and converts it into a mesh. So uh, I can delete it now. Um, we can see it again while making it solid. It made a mesh from this path. And uh, when we have a mesh, that would mean we can have a particle system on it. And like I told you before, the fracture modifier uses this particle cloud to generate the smaller shards. So that's the way it always is working. And play the animation and you will see how this is breaking. Sometimes we have the problem, so let me uh, bring it back mass, mass one. Sometimes we have the problem that uh, some shards that are that fell down to the ground don't stop to uh, to move. Like you can see here, I saw there's something. Uh, okay, they are uh, rotating here and jumping around. Is something we do not want. Uh, we have some special thing here. While well, being on the ground, you can. Uh, use the untrigger. Untrigger means uh, trigger shards that fell down will stop to move directly when hitting an untrigger. So let's play the animation. And you will see they directly stop to move. That might be not optimal in uh, every scene and uh, what we are missing here is a way to uh, tell the simulator uh, they should slow down before stopping. So it might be something we have to work on, uh, but in general, I would say this is a very useful feature too. Okay, so these are the basics about how to gen generate smaller shards, uh, how they're working, and uh, how to use all the trigger settings. I hope you enjoyed that uh, small tutorial. Uh, more will come in the future. Uh, I hope you love the Fracture Modifier as I am doing it and the whole development team um, will enjoy your experimental videos about this. See you the next time.